Okay, welcome back. Um, we'll include your calls now that um, we've, we've come back. And um, uh, re returning to one of the arms of this particular octopus subject, the, the whole matter of campaign fundings, which uh, Ikiti is a particularly good example as um, humongous sums have been spoken of and indeed we're beginning to get some statements, categorical, that yeah, it, it, that was for anything else. Let's be clear about it. All over the world, politics is a game that involves money, the spending of money, all over. However... That's why it was regulated. In our, yeah, that, that's the point I wanted to make. In appreciation of the fact that the same money, which is expected to be expended, is also the root of all evils, as the <laughs> Bible puts it. They, 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 they became the need to regulate it and moderate the use of it with respect to... Now, here in Nigeria, what is the regulatory <laughs> legal instrument? You're talking of the Electoral Act, specifically Section 91, which also, in my view, committed... In short, is responsible for, for the problem we are having. In other words, the law in Nigeria has also legitimized the over monetization of politics. How is that? How do I put it? If you look at that section 91, subsection 2, it says that the president, for you to vie for the office of the presidency mm. of this country, you have a maximum seal of 1 billion naira. Please, this is the express language of section 91, subsection 2 of the Electoral Act 2010, that any person vying for the position of the president shall not <coughs> spend more than a billion naira. 1 billion naira. It mentions it. It goes down into a subsection territory to say that if you are vying for governorship, governorship. You, sh you shall spend not more than 200 million naira. Goes down to that of the Senate and pegs it at 40 million, mm -hmm. House of Reps 20 million, then chairmanship 1 million, and so on and so forth. Now, the question is how would a man who spends, let's even say, half that 1 billion, mm -hmm. which is 500 million, mm -hmm. uh, to what extent can he be focused? on the core mandate of his election, which is to deliver the dividend of democracy as against the primitive accumulation to recoup what had happened. Our president, dear president, did say that he didn't even have the money for the nomination form. Mm -hmm. Now, if he didn't have the money for nomination form, which I imagine was hovering around the uh, Z5 million or thereabout, where are you expected to see, I say, half one billion naira? So for me, the well, it's you, you, but I'm going to I'm going to there, pin there are legitimate ways of raising funds. Now let's, the even, let's even go to the raising of funds. Yes. The problem is that there's a ceiling. Let's even go to that raising fund. Something had just happened in Ekiti. And luckily, uh, both the villains and uh, the instigators are all on air, you know, running amok with the explanations as to what has happened. And the one comes out to say, yes. How could you, how can they deny this time around that? They funded me. And that is a corporate legal entity in this country. Section 38, subsection 2 of CAMA, which is the Companies and Allied Matter Act, clearly, in very clear language, prohibits a company, no less a bank, from donating it's money to any political association oh. or any politician or for any political, political very purposes. expressly so. And goes on to say that if that happens, both the person who did that and those who were in league with him in taking that decision as a corporate entity shall be liable Lime. on conviction to a refund of that amount that was expended. Now, the question is, who was, the, who was at the helm of a Zenith Bank as at the time all of this happened? That is your CB, CBN CBN governor. governor. So how has it become so difficult? And uh, you see, we I, I made it clear here some time ago that I was one of those who were appointed by INEC to prosecute electoral offenses. But they couldn't take off, and a lot of reasons have been given mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. Under Section 150 of the same Electoral Act, the, the Independent Electoral Commission of Nigeria is empowered to prosecute electoral offenses. This is one of such offenses. 
But you see, are, are there any moves in that direction to the best of your knowledge? Certainly not. What is happening yeah, now? This even is, so, because so this, this, even is, this, this is part. Think, this sorry, is, and this I'm is running off here. I'm running off. This is part of the situation. That is it. That is part. This is part of the problem. Failure of institution. Yes. You don't mm -hmm. need. You don't need to be whipped to lie. Oh, 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 oh. Section two hundred and twenty-two. Oh, oh, failure to make them work. Oh well. I, or I, let them no, work. I, I think. Um, I, you know, I thought I was just going to give the last. Okay, the last line. Lego provision. Section two hundred and twenty-two. Of the constitution, which is the ground law, I mean, you talk of uh, letter, uh, these mm. are statutory. The constitution, it says that no, no person can make financial donations to a political party except the political party itself. I don't know if you understand what I mean. Except you're a member of that political God party. God bless you. So, so they, they all the funds for elections are supposed to come from contributions and, uh, by their members. Sometimes they are even open contributions in excess of the amount that is limited mm -hmm. by the Electoral Act. Mm -hmm. ah. no, well, know, so I, how, I, how I realistic, uh, first of all, perhaps, are the provisions of that rule? Uh, because sometimes uh, you lawyers talk about um, a bad law. It's law nevertheless, but a law that cannot be obeyed is probably something like of a bad law. Uh, I don't know if, if anything of that uh, sort of applies because uh, look at the length and breadth of the country and that kind of a thing. They might have cited this kind of a reason as to why perhaps some of these things are happening. Well, yeah, you, you know, one thing you must understand is that when politics mix together with law, there's always a major conflict. <laughs> The major conflict is because in as much as you say that law... Uh, could you hold it, please? Uh, just hold the thought. Wally from Joss, so that I don't lose him. I, I, I beg your pardon. Good morning, Mr. Wally. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Thank you for calling in, sir. Yeah. Please, I just want to contribute on this program. Sure. I just want to say this is our elite. They just deceive us. Our what? Of uh, Vice President Atiku, Abu Bakr. When he was there... Why was he not talking about restructuring? And this happened for a man that was shouting restructuring now, up and down. When you, President Jonathan was there, he said President Jonathan, he did not talk about restructuring. Which are Fanny Fanny man? Atiku. Uh, no, no, he no. Mentioned he mentioned that Tiku, and, and then said, and then this, uh, and I think, uh, God, God, no, well, since he, did, since uh, he didn't since mention the, no, the um, <laughs> uh, uh, huh, okay, so, now, sorry. I, I was saying that, um, you know, when you have a mixture of politics and law, uh, in the true sense, the law should take precedence. Unfortunately, it is the politics that will have to implement the law. What do I mean? Executive is a political arm in terms of um, appointment in terms of election, in terms of coming to offices and all those stuff like that. Now, that simply means that it is the law that suits them that becomes implementable. If you are talking, like you said, yes, that's the provision of the law, a president of a country, one billion. Unfortunately, the law did not also provide room, did not give room for inflation, for example. I mean, these are things we must understand. You know, did not make, it makes it a closed one. And once such things are closed, it becomes a tall order. Now, don't forget also that um, um, political funding and the like all over the world is extremely expensive. Mm. Yes, the law has made provision to the extent of um, one million naira for legislatures, councillors, and the like, all those stuff like that. But look at it. How much do they even use to purchase the form? Mm. It's almost more than the statutory mm. provision mm. of the law. Mm -hmm. That is one area. And who is going to prosecute? Those that are in office are those that will prosecute. Mm. That makes it a very difficult situation. It's just as good as saying that uh, you are asking a policeman to leave your premises and the police, uh, you want to fight the police out of your premises mm. and you need the assistance of the police to move the police out of your premises. <laughs> I mean, it becomes a very difficult uh, Ben, Egbeda, thank you very much for holding on. Go right ahead now, please. Yeah, Mr. Yari, good morning. Good morning, sir. I don't know why you don't connect me on your program anymore. <laughs> Sometimes I call and call and call and... Uh... Wow. Ben, you're connected. Okay. Um, I just want to... I, I don't want to be angry this morning because I'm okay. always very thank angry you. when I call on this program. I remember... Thank you. Know, you. Thank you for not being angry. The reason I don't know why. Uh, so let me go through the point. The truth is this. When God created us, we, he, he, he gave us conscience. Why we our leaders wait? Look at what's happening in Britain. It's because they have conscience. They, 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 they love humanity. 
Why? Why were we that wait to to you know you try to you know, look at all the loops in the law before they can help us or before they can do the right thing? The truth is this: our leaders have no conscience. That is why they are doing this to us. I've been mean, coming for the past almost twenty years. I don't, I don't have a single job. Every day I wake up on the TV, I, I hear people stealing billions, billions, billions of naira. Money made for me and my children and, and, and uh, all of us. Why are they doing this to us? But the truth is this, they can be aware that a time will come, because the Nigerian masses are already aware and they're already enlightened. A time will come, we youth will not allow all this to happen again. Oh. But we stand strongly against every looter in this country. Let them mark my words. That time will come. All Nigerians will mobilize themselves. Since they don't have conscience, they are looking at the loser of the law just to do what they want to do and all that. They still have money to do a election. I don't want to talk too much, but the truth is this, they don't have conscience. All right. Because if they look at Cameron, look, 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 look at the British Prime Minister. You just look at just, just look at everything went smoothly, you know. In Nigeria, <laughs> uh, okay, Ben. Okay, Ben. You did promise you weren't going to be angry, uh, but thank you very much. And I think people can feel your exasperation. Uh, uh, look at where he took you to. Because at the end of the day, it's humans who implement all of these things. And that's where the matter of conscience came in. And he related it back to the UK and the way people have done things with dignity. Yes. Over the weekend, I was coming from Benin, precisely on Sunday. And that reminds me, in Guardian of that Sunday, I was reading... Rollins interview, mm. Jerry Rollins. Mm -hmm. And he recounted the account of his experience with former National Security Advisor, Gwazo, where he showed appreciation that Abacha gave $5 million to Rollins, but you know, uh, transferred it to him, or conveyed it to him through the National Security Adv uh, Advisor, Gwazo. Now, Rollins confirmed that he collected just two million dollars. In other words, you were given five million to give onto a, 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 a colleague president. You delivered less than half that amount. Mm. And uh, it is only after he died mm -hmm. that we are now hearing the truth. In short, the, his regret was that if he had known, he would have called Abacha to say, thank you for the two million dollars you gave me. Perhaps the whole truth would have come. Yeah. Out. I didn't give you two million. Mm. I gave you five million mm. uh, uh, dollars. Uh, He's going to show you, but, uh, but that's Mahmoud, that's Mahmoud is waiting <laughs> on the line uh, from Ikwe. Good morning, Mahmoud. Good morning, Mr. Yori. Thank you for calling in. Uh, do, I, do I call you Chief Yori? Mm. No, no, no. Yori will do. Well, thank you very much. Who insist? Chief and uncle. Honestly, uh, thank you once again for you being there for us for, as a moderator for, on national issues. Thank you. And uh, I want to also thank uh, Mr. Malaki. I've been following him, and he's a dedicated lawyer and an activist. Thank you. And the other guy in the, in the very fine... Uh, uh, dangerous uh, outfit, Avengers Mr. Fouilleton. Very dangerous. <laughs> restructuring. If we don't restructure this country, let me tell you, disaster is within for us. May God forgive us. The kind of unemployment, the kind of embezzlement, some of us cannot sleep in the night. Hmm. Even in the afternoon, when we are even driving, sometimes you have to just pass so that your brain will just calm down. A bunch of, a bunch of, I don't, don't know what to have to call it. Some human beings who feel this country belongs to them, that have heard this country juggler. And may God forgive us if there is any revolution. This country will catch fire. And may God help us. Thank you so much. Indeed. Thank you very much. Um, those kind of sentiments, there are a lot of people. Thank you very much, Mr. Mahmoud, for calling in on with it. There's so many people that feel that way with the kind of revelations that are happening. No, in fact, there are people who are, who are wondering, can it be true? people are talking about the system. Is there any system? The whole thing is in tatters. No, um, it relates back know, to the conscience yes. that uh, that gentleman brought uh, up. Unfortunately, like he said, Many of our leaders don't have conscience. But one of my major concerns is, I, I, I had um, politicians talk before they get to offices. You see them with wonderful, laudable ideas. You see them with concepts that can restructure um, and make the society better. But immediately they get into that office. It's a different ball game entirely is as it, in different ball game entirely is, is, is it is it connected uh, that uh, the, the the national conference you know as it was that they that they did people talk there has anything come out of it there are people who have just no, left it, it high it, and dry yes there are people who are saying the, that there are some useful things in there i i I, I, I happen to fall within the category of people that 
is advocating that the federal government should revisit the national conference, especially the resolutions that are reached. And look at those ones that you think would make the country to progress. Don't forget that the people that were gathered together, yes. they are Nigerians. But it's not a priority now, we've heard. Mm -hmm. Remember? Uh, we've heard mm -hmm. that it's not what a priority. What is the priority now? <laughs> I don't know. Malachi. What is the priority now? <laughs> now, um, <laughs> well, uh, I had once listened to Professor Woloshenka. Uh, Kimbi calling in. Kimbi is calling in from Otta. I beg your pardon. Uh, is it a Mr. or a Mrs. Kimbi? Mr. Mr. Kimbi, good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Yuri. Go right ahead, please. Uh, please, I, I would like to correct an impression. Call in on your program and they try to talk about uh, one political party or one individual. What we discuss, what you are discussing on television is about national security and the importance of and white people uh, and the behaviors of our leaders is taking up uh, uh, political offices. So it's not, it, it, people should not call and narrow it down to when somebody is like this, when somebody is like this. Every one of them who have taken office, who have taken a, a, a political office in Nigeria, including the president, uh, people they now have mismanaged and at one point or the other embezzled this country's money. So it, 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 I, I, I would like to, uh, for you to appeal to uh, viewers who, who, who phone in to, to, to actually address issues directly, not um, trying to uh, paint somebody black or paint. Every one of them has made this. All right, Mr. Talk about one billion. The DPC not exceed one billion. Okay, Mr. Kimbi. Not exceed one billion. We the other uh, political parties not exceed one billion. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Kimbi. Uh, thank you for calling in. We take all sorts of opinion. Mm. It doesn't matter. We will take it. But thank you. We have noted yours. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't get a sense that he was. Well, because I, 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 I didn't I think didn't there was either, any such. A, no, there, there has been uh, no. However, instance, however, that's why I said we take all no opinions. Yeah. No, we don't do any personal. However, I think I'll take advantage of that resentment of his mm. to also talk about very important issues that must engender full and effective democratization process, and that is the leadership recruitment processes as well as the citizen participation. Now, I, I think that to a, a large extent, the, the factors that we deal with in throwing up leaders in this country are quite faulty. I have just given you an instance with our electoral act, which says you must be expecting that somebody should not spend or should mm -hmm. spend as much as this. Mm -hmm. This, There's a is, ceiling. For me, that is even an invitation. You, okay. you are deliberately so if you, so that pointing if you don't in even, the direction of... If you don't of, even need as much, have, you can sort of aim for yes, it. Yes, you must have this kind of money. And I tell you, those are outrageous amount of money that somebody individually mm. should have mm -hmm. in trying to push a collective agenda. Mm. Now, secondly... Yeah, but he didn't say the person has to have it. He no, just says... He said you be, should not spend yes. more than that. Yes. When so, you say... But some, it doesn't have somebody, to be personal say, money. When you say somebody who is aspiring to become the president should mobilize at least not less than or not more, more than, than one mm. billion naira, mm. you're already yeah. removing yeah. from the totality that, of yes. his energy yes. the issues of core ideological content of the program away from... Uh, the, the rating. You so, are talking so, so about that's your the with that particular provision. Yes. You know, uh, but uh, I don't want to lose. Uh, somebody has been on the line for a while. Mr. George Inikeja, good morning and thank you for holding on. Good morning, Uncle Yori. Good morning, sir. Your panelists, agree them. Good morning. Good morning. They painted a picture of what happened in Britain and that picture did not uh, talk about car um, uh, it, it's about character. Yes. What has happened in England, is it about the structure? It's about the character of the people that are in governance. I think that is what we should be talking about in Nigeria as well. Who are the people that we are electing? I'm on the same page with the Vice President on this issue of restructuring. Our problem is not the structure. Our problem is the people who are using the structure to govern us. We need qualitative people. If we have, we, we didn't know that there, will be, that, there, are go, there, are, there, there can be a president that will come and say, you, general this or general that, we have stolen our money. This is the money you took, we want it back, and it will come to be. 
So we want character. For me, it is character, not the structure. There's nothing wrong with our structure. Okay. Let us look at it like this, Uncle Yori. So, 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 so the, the, the character thing will mix in with the conscience matter? Yes. Character of the person, the conscience, the person, his ability to understand the need of the people and feel their pain and see things. Not somebody that is looking up, right? People are dying of hunger. I saw pictures of people dying in, um, of hunger in IDP camps. And uh, those who are in charge of these things, these things do not move them. So we are talking about the situation. Let us look at the, uh, uh, the way we share our federal money. 52% to the federal government, then 26% to the states and all that. That was restructuring. If you increase it, that is the kind of restructuring they are talking about. If you increase it, like, for example, the one that goes to the states is increased by 50%. What is the guarantee that that money, that the additional one will not be mismanaged the way they are mismanaging now? <laughs> they were giving bailout to pay workers. Many of the governors did not use the money. Some of, some of them, we saw that the money was placed in a, a micro finance bank for, to yield interest for them. If you add more money, what is the guarantee that the money will get to the people? So let's talk about the need for good people in governance, not the structure. I support the president. The people that lost the elections are the ones that are coming up with all these distractions. All right, Mr. George. Why, why didn't they do it? All right, That's Mr. George. Thank, thank, thank you very much for calling in. Mr. George there, character, mm -hmm. conscience, he didn't add it, but I'm also, I'm sure he also meant, meant uh, also something like selflessness. That's correct. Because we, we, he's coming directly from the comparison with Britain. Yeah. You can't go I, into politics expecting that this is a money-making venture, I, but oftentimes that happens here. I respect his views. However, if you also have men of character, principle, and integrity. And selfless. And selfless persons, and dump them in a totally flawed structural political arrangement, they will fail. It is for the same reason that people say, if you bring Obama to come and administer Nigeria in the way that Nigeria is presently constituted, mm -hmm. he will fail. So there is a sense... So, so it goes back to what the, a point we made earlier about yes. the people no, and making I, up the know, polity. Yeah, that's why I'm saying, you know, the no, part it, citizen it, it, participation in government is by far more important than what the variables that we are dealing with at the moment. And how does it work? It is that we have looked at our polity and find that there is a seeming collapse of the institutions of government where the state actors have not just abandoned their responsibility, mm -hmm. but they have been e effectively shown to be ineffective. And therefore, what happens? It is to mobilize the energy of the, of the larger percentage of, of Nigerians who are already so changed to say that, look, we don't need to allow the National Assembly, by the abdication of their responsibility, to ruin these whole processes. We must as it were, constitute ourselves in civil society organizations and raise some of these thematic, including what you are doing now. I can tell you, I bet you, that some of the ideas with which they work mm. come from programs such as this. Mm, mm, and mm. why is it that a national assembly or a state house of assembly whose responsibility indeed under the constitution and all over democracy, across democracies, is to moderate the excesses of the executive, why is it that they continually abandon that responsibility because of what? Money. Therefore, it is the people who are already so changed by such abdication of responsibility that organizes themselves, for instance, mm. issues of budget monitoring, for instance, issues of quality of legislation made. How many of these uh, bills have they abandoned, okay. including the media, I, 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 the media, I, I, media bill? I, I, I hear you, but and now because of the resentment of the people. Uh, but to bring uh, uh, to, Tony into the matter, taking from Mr. George's uh, comment and you know uh, Malaki's expatiation on it, uh, look, uh, you, you have to choose from the polity, from the people that you have, right? And um, I, I don't know. Uh, we, we we said before about. Uh, people get the police they deserve and uh, Malachi gave us a, a more humorous version of the same thing. Even in the church, for example, you hear of bad behavior. Let me just put it discreetly like that. So th there seems to be this, where, well, are, we going to me, where are we going to find, I was, I was looking at maybe one of the ridiculous examples would be, okay, you know what, go inside the church. If you're not a church member, you're a very good, proven church member, you can't be appointed for political office, but even there, you hear Some stories. of them are standing let, let, me, let me give yes. you, let me give you. So, so this is the problem that we uh, have. There was a little boy who, who stole, and the mother spanked him for stealing and say, 
Uh, do you know where this thing will take you to? And the boy said, yes. He said, where? Well, said, national assignment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, an adult made up that joke. Uh, yes. An adult, uh, made, an up adult that joke. made that but joke. But it was to put the point. It was, yes, exactly, to put the point. Well, not making an absolute statement that um, people in yes. national assembly yes. are, yes. are thieves and the like. Mm -hmm. But um, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, if you look at what is happening in this country, right from the foundation, there is defect. Go to primary school now. A primary school people want to ride the Rolls Royce. So, so wait Go a minute. To wait a minute. I, I understand you where you're going. I know where secondary. you're going. So are you saying we're stuck? No, we're not stuck. We're not stuck. But the truth is that it has to be from the top now. There must be a deliberate and conscious hmm. policy to reorientate, to bring a different value system, mm -hmm. which is the true value system mm -hmm. of good conscience, mm -hmm. integrity, honesty, and truth. And you don't think they're doing enough not, of that at the moment? It's not a matter of doing enough. It's not there. Okay, we, we don't have any more time. As we don't have any more time. It's not there. We don't have any more time, and I think it's a fine place to leave it. Hopefully they're listening, and um, as you said, so many conversations like this are going on all over the place. Um, this is something that needs addressing. Uh, I, I want to thank you both gentlemen. Uh, Malaki, did you want to add a one-liner? Oh, except to say that uh, the, there is prospect, there is light in the horizon. We need to be focused on precisely what we want to achieve in our country, uh, notwithstanding the distractions that we have had. Mm. A lot of other nations have had such distractions, but if we are focused on the core issues that will lead us to the other road, we will get it. Thank you very much, uh, Malaki Ugumadu, human rights activist and lawyer. And thank you very much, uh, Tony of Oyeton, security expert and uh, lawyer. I'll be back tomorrow, God willing, with a fresh edition of the program. I'm Yoli Folani. Bye-bye for now.